This video is sponsored by All PCB. What's up guys, I'm Steven, and today we're putting a pin in this smartwatch project. Last time I designed a circuit board, made a whole frame for it, got these awesome straps all clipped in and everything. Looks pretty great, but the big missing component of the circuit board was not part of the equation. Until today! Guess what came in the mail? Ha ha! It just never gets old. It never will. It never has. It never will. It's always cool getting boards. Ah! All this board is really doing is taking what I had in the last video, the screen on the little breakout, and the ESP on the little breakout and connecting them together. I also threw in stuff like battery management so I can recharge the LiPo battery that's gonna be powering the watch along with a voltage regulator to make sure everything gets the 3.3 volts that I want it to get. But pretty much it's just taking all the parts that I had out on my big old breadboard last time and whoosh, compressing it down into a nice neat little package. And you can see that here. This big spot right here is obviously for the ESP. It has a very distinct footprint. On this side is where my battery management and my voltage regulator live. And on the back is the connector for the display, some pads for programming the watch, and then some pads over here for recharging. So now it's time for the best part, taking this sucker and putting all the components on it, giving it power, and hoping that it boots up. I did a big dumb. <laughs> All right, I sawed up the board. Everything's going fine. I'm programming the ESP. Beautiful, no problems. But the screen isn't working for some reason. Okay, whatever. I figure it's probably just, I have a solder bridge between a couple of the pins. No problem. But then I realize that the connector's on backwards. I put the connector on backwards. And sure enough, I flip the connector around and it works beautifully backwards. See how the screen is actually pointing down? It really should be pointing up so it can wrap around the board and face front on the watch. But I just got it wrong in the schematic and it works great and it's cool that like the screen is working and everything on my circuit board, but it's backwards. <laughs> uh, it's still pretty cool though. I also realized I messed up like a couple other little small things like two of my ground pores weren't connected so I had to add this little bodge wire in the back, which is okay, it's just like, Less than ideal, but I can't use this board. I can't use it. When I take the screen to try and like wrap it around for the front, it like doesn't even reach. And it's facing the wrong direction anyway, so it doesn't even matter. And I feel like a broken record. Every single time I make a circuit board, I'm like, I'm gonna just check it better next time. I don't know, it's just a constant fight to like, make sure that what you're putting out there is exactly what it is that you want and double checking absolutely everything, even the really simple stuff, because you're gonna mess up the simple stuff. That's what you mess up the most from what I found. But it is what it is. Let's fix it. They're here. It's done. I just soldered on all the components. I even put on the little connector for the screen and connected the screen on there. The next step is to upload the graphics test to this and see if it works. I'm really hoping it will because this is now my second attempt making a circuit board to make this work. So if it doesn't, I'm gonna be tremendously bummed, but hopefully it will work. All right, let's program it. Okay, surprisingly it uploaded without a hitch, so now I'm gonna give it some power and see if we actually get an animation out of it. To make sure that everything is working, I'm gonna kind of simulate the battery with my power supply, and I'm just gonna put a nominal battery voltage into the battery pins, but instead of actually using the battery, I'm just gonna use my power supply, and that'll check and make sure that the linear regulator is working and like all my battery stuff isn't like gonna explode. So I'm gonna set my power supply to like 3.7 volts, and connect it up to where the battery's gonna go and cross my fingers. <laughs> Here we go.
I cannot even begin to express how relieved I am. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So, now, it's soldering on the battery, fitting it in the case, and I think I'm gonna paint the case. The gray's cool, but I want it to be black. Put some actual watch-like firmware on it, and then put it on my wrist. I think that's it. I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. All right, here we go. It's time to assemble my custom smartwatch. All right, so I've been writing code for like an hour and I have basic watch functionality working on this thing. I made it so it's actually tracking the time and it's not connected to my phone yet. I just put in the time in the sketch at the time of upload and then it counts from there on out, which is kind of janky, but it's good for now just to make sure everything works. Then I added in capacitive touch. So now the screen will only turn on when you're actually touching the watch. So it's not shining bright light out of the screen the whole time and wasting the battery. The screen is normally dark unless you touch the cap touch pads. And then it comes on. This is bare bones watch functionality. Later down the road, I wanna make it so you can swipe through menus because there are two cap touch pads. So I can check and see if the capacitance changes between the two pads, indicating a swipe or just like a full palm to turn the screen off or all kinds of cool stuff. But for right now, this is great just to test it out, just to make sure that the whole thing works. Oh man, I am so excited about this. So the capacitive touch totally works. When I touch my finger on either side of the frame, the display comes on. <laughs> right now I just have it displaying the time and it's not pulling it from my phone. It's just programmed in like it was before, but it's all in this little package. And here is my pebble for comparison. Like not too bad. That's pretty close. I'm happy with that. There's some pads on the back. We'll zoom in here real quick for programming. There's also some holes for recharging. I'm gonna build a little programming charging dock thing. I intend to have this thing on all the time moving forward, just like my Pebble. There's no off switch, but for prototyping and for being able to reprogram it, I do need to be able to turn it off. So last minute I cut a little hole in the side and I just added a little slide switch. It's the same one that's on the glow tie. I had some left over. So this lets me turn it on and off if I have to for reprogramming or whatever. You can see the capacitive touch isn't perfect. Like it'll flicker sometimes. See, you're like right there. So I need to do a little bit of smoothing and you know, not let like one or two triggers above my threshold uh, make the screen display. Just general cleaning it up. But I mean, this is a watch of the same form factor as the Pebble. Wow, it was really hard to get everything to fit into this tiny little thing. Now it's just writing a bunch of code for it. All the hardware is done. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my Instagram where I post updates about my projects way before they come out on YouTube, and I'll see you next time. And I want to give a shout out to All PCB for sponsoring this video. When I first started making boards, I ordered a small board from every board shop that I could find just to compare, and I picked All PCB like years ago, and I've been using them ever since. But you know, I love matte black boards with a gold finish, and I've tried ordering those from maybe half a dozen different board shops, and none of them look as good as from All PCB. So if anything else, just for how beautiful they come out at the end, 
All PCB has been really good. And of course, all the boards work beautifully the first time, it's provided that I designed them correctly. I would wholeheartedly endorse them, even if they weren't sponsoring this video. But they are, so thank you, All PCB. Thank you.